you know, there's more than one former Jackson State affiliated coach. The coach on the FBS level is a head coach. Give much respect due to Mr. Chang. Went back home to his alma mater as a head coach of Hawaii. Now, that would be a great place for Jackson to play. Make it a destination game. Just think about it. Now on to today's video. Me and you, your mama and your cousin. One of the first things I, I look at is why in the hell don't every single HBCU, every HBCU, who claims to be for the community, from the community, by the community, have a local TV broadcast deal? Now what St. Thomas and Fox 9 Plus has working here, they're going to show the last four football games of the season, the home games, I believe. They're going to show basketball games, baseball games, hockey games, women's and men's. The contract for local sports, which inside the ESPN's deal is truly allowed, is $750,000. It's on top of whatever else they get from their conference. While we're looking to rebrand and rebuild, we got to start first with that. Then we got to go on to make everything worth your while. Financially, why in the world isn't this an option? I'm looking at every single HBC you have on local contracts that they negotiate themselves. If you teach negotiation, you teach law at your school, you should have professors or someone on staff who can do this for you. If you can't, reevaluate yourself as an institution. But also, right now we're on the verge of the CIAA, which is owning the MEAC, and the SIAC, we, we Revigorating the Pioneer Bowl, which is their version of Celebration Bowl, to play at this stadium owned by David Beckham, which brings back my original argument from this channel. The second place team of each league, I mean the runner up from the SWAC championship game, and the second place team or the quote unquote co defendant who's not going to play in the Celebration Bowl. Why don't we play each other? More money, more money. Also, more publicity. Because when you're trying to recruit talent, not just get them out of the portal, but actually recruit talent, mm -hmm. they don't see you. They can't play. They don't understand why you want them. A game in Jamaica would be huge. If you don't want to go to Jamaica, you can easily go somewhere else. You can play the game in St. Petersburg, Florida. The home they have an Under Armour. Yeah. You can play that game there. MEAC versus SWAT. Or you can do at large HBCUs. So if AT, Hampton, Tennessee State want to get involved, you can do that. If there is an HBCU, i.e., last year would have been FAMU, with a winning record not involved with the playoffs, they could be the one hosting. And then, if there's another HBCU, MEAC first, or other conference first, with a winning record that's not involved in the playoffs or the Celebration Bowl, the committee can pick them. If you don't want to play St. Petersburg, it's fine. You can definitely go ahead and play in the wonderful city of New Orleans. New Orleans is known for having these type of games. They're a city that has plenty of hotels. By playing in December, 
you won't have to worry about one, the cold, two, playoff games. Just working around New Orleans Saints home games. Or St. Petersburg, because there's no baseball going on in that part of the, part of the state at that time of the year. See, I think the main thing we gotta look at, we gotta find other avenues. And yes, this is kind of what Coach Prime said, I mentioned before. And this is something that actually makes more sense. We get more eyes on the product. We hopefully get better recruits on the product. So we won't have to go through a weekend where the MEAC doesn't win a game because of quote unquote lack of players, availability, or even injuries like we've seen before. We understand the thing about the lack of quote unquote depth. But by having an extra game for teams who want to be in there, who season otherwise would be um, put to rest, it will get that smoke. It will get something burning and something building up for next year. So teams know that, hey, if we don't get in the playoffs, if we don't host the, the SWAT championship, if we don't win the MEAC, we still have a chance. Depending on our crowd support in our home games, we can be picked to play at the secondary bowl game. I know people are going to say, well, most of these teams live in areas where they can't afford to go to these games. That's why I said the way I did. The team that's not in the playoffs, that is not, that does not have a losing record, will be the first one to be picked. And if there is no other team like that from an opposite conference, then it becomes what's called a group effort. They get to be picked at random. If Tennessee State goes six and five, but they don't get a bowl game or win the conference, or a playoff game or win the conference, they can get picked. Same with AT, same with Hampton, or any other team on the FCS level for HBCU. This rebranding will not only give HBCUs more light as far as playing each other and getting more light as far as more games, it will also, hopefully in the future, give them more recruiting talent, get them a bigger base for recruits to see, hey, I can go develop my talent on an HBCU, get all the good stuff HBCUs give as far as teaching me to be a man, teaching me to be an adult, as well as teaching me about my history. And I have a chance to play in one of these bowl games. I think the rebranding of HBCU football is something needed because the shots we've taken over the last couple of years have been something that most conferences cannot come up from. And who's going to say no as far as a fan to an extra game? For instance, if this year FAMU playing NC Central or playing Morgan State in Celebration Bowl, who's going to turn down Jackson State playing either Central or Morgan who I think is going to be up there in the MEAC in St. Petersburg, Florida? Or Grambling playing that team in New Orleans? The rebranding of what we can do, what we can, what we can give out, is something that needs to be done. Because right now, we're at a point where it's make it or break it with the SWAC and MEAC as far as HBCU football. What are your thoughts? Do you think we can do something different? Or keep going along with the same old, same old? Coach Simmons, I'm out.